from what I already know that you have a second child, yeah? Yeah. And I have, and uh, my congratulations myself too. So my, my second son is uh, a little bit uh, older than a year now. So oh, yeah. yeah, I'm going it all over again. <laughs> just, just started. <laughs> just start, yeah. Just start again from the crush, the crush, the crush again. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. So, uh, then was the slide last time you were in Moscow about 12, 13 years. Or more? No, the last time that I was in Moscow was in 2019. 2019? Oh, that, that's yeah, uh, yeah. That, that was quite recently. Yeah, no, it's still a long area. And then I went on to Samara and uh, yeah, and I uh, had the other project for around three or something like that. That was the last time that I was in Russia uh, and I fly over Moscow, but I don't see a lot of. Uh, of Moscow they are because as you know was going with the airplane and going on two three hours later so no really time to go out to, to visit something or do something okay well yeah well, well well it was not for the for the job yeah the job was in another town but here yeah. in Moscow we we uh, we worked on the factory I think it was like about 12 to 13 years ago. Yeah. yeah, it was a little in the 2010 somewhere. Yeah, some, something Early like that. 2010. So, are you still with the same wife <laughs> or with a different yeah. one? No, no, it's still was the same. <laughs> Con congratulations. Yeah, you uh, I I think you are lucky. Yeah. I hope oh, the yeah. other I hope the other colleagues who had uh, the I will not say the names. I re I remember the names, but uh, one colleague I remember had two children, so hopefully he is fine. Also, yes, I think uh, I know which one you mean. <laughs> but yeah. he, uh, he stopped working for us, so he went somewhere else, and so I don't have um, any contact to him. Since around okay. two years, something like that. So I cannot say you're in which mode he is and what the situation is for the moment. Yeah. It's do always live, like. Okay. Do you live in the same city in Germany? I mean. Yes. Uh, yeah. the same. And I understand. Uh, I understand. Change. You you moved or you're just remodeling now? What? No, no. Uh, I moved from the main town to a, a small top town or a town that is. Um, located near to them, but so it's not far away. That means before I had around 10 15 minutes to my job, and now it's around 25 minutes to my job. Yeah, that's nice. I remember those. Uh, it's, it's called Stad. Yeah, it, it was yeah. It, they, they were quite nice, <laughs> at least from the outside <laughs> looking. <laughs> so, so uh, may, maybe for the start, ju just to like to warm up. Uh, I suppose you know about the group, the musical group called Rammstein. Yeah. Yeah. Have you seen the 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 video called Deutschland? Yes, I have seen it. Uh, could you describe, like, in in the, maybe in a few in a few sentences or in a few words, how how German people see what was shown? Because here in Moscow we spent like uh, maybe. A week, uh, like watching it frame by frame and decoding all the references and all the images and the quotes and whatever. So, and and we came to a lot of different, really complicated theories what what was actually meant. So, my question is, uh, as a German, how do you see what they were trying to show in this uh, clip? Uh, what I think, because you have a lot of clips and they clip shows, uh, I would say, a small story. It will show symbol the, the beginning of Germany until it's grow up and uh, to the part where you have the first and second world war and things after it. That is very simple spoken what they want to see. But you have also inside of that special, um, I would say, uh, special conditions of Situations that happen in a um, specific uh, situation with a specific person. 
So you have to know a little bit the German history and also a little bit about a um, person who um, has a historical, a historical re relation to Germany. It's not only to show to say, okay, there the, the, the country was founded by this and that, or yeah, the beginning. It's also a little bit of a sub story that they are happening of um, historical persons. All has been mixed together. And uh, the special thing is also in that video that in some cases it's not 100% clear which person will be shown directly uh, when you see it. It becomes only clear after you see then the next map. And this person or this arrangement of person who is standing there will be shown again. You know, I hope you know a little bit what I mean. Is oh, yes, uh, we, we, had some, we, we had some people who actually knew quite a lot of uh, German history and, and uh, like the ancient ones that were starting with this Roman, Roman soldiers. But, but my, yeah. my, my question was uh, mostly concerning like the general message and the, and the ending, of course. So uh, how, how, is an, uh, how an average German sees it, what, the, what they were trying to show? There, there are different meanings included because it's not only the pictures; it's only also the text. So, and it does it. Uh, the meaning is that the German history was always very bloody, and we have to keep in our minds and our souls that a lot of mistakes happened in the past, and also we have to learn uh, up about this or from this situation to get a better future. That is more the thinking I have on that video. And uh, the, do you think they were showing uh, that the future is, is going to be better or it's going to repeat itself again? No. That's, that, uh, they will show that it, it depends on the people, on the, the, the person who watch it, what they think about, uh, what they do by their own. To say, okay, that what shown there or happened in the past, it should not be repeated anywhere, also, especially not in German again. Interesting, because, uh, well, at, at least for myself, I, I mostly saw it as a as a hint to an Armageddon. So no. the, the, the biblical no. Armageddon, which is which is uh, like hinted for the future, this, the no. priest, the dogs, the, the the final. I mean, the final scene, this uh, the coffin. Yes, but then you have also to do always Rammstein a little bit in relation because they always want to uh, to wake up people to show some things that are. Not looking good in the first moment, you know what I mean? Because if you have also seen other videos from Rammstein, also from Lindemann, with the, the singer and songwriter in most cases, that he always shows in his videos, uh, scary, 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 uh, situation that should wake up the person and goes over, I would say, the limitations or the standards over them. But does not mean uh, does not have always a uh, specified meaning for things. Yes, I think uh, they will show in the end something that uh, bring like a highlight to say, okay, here you see, it's over. We have Armageddon, and everything will be destroyed. It's maybe possible that uh, that some person will think about it, but I see it more that is like like I told you. A video or a song to remember to say, okay, we had a start, uh, a hard beginning, then we had some bad days between that all, but in the end, it depends always on yourself as citizens or whatever to say to make something better out of it. Okay. But it's not, okay. only, yeah. it's not, I think the, the video or the video and the music that is in some cases two different parts. But I think if you 
listen to the to the song itself without the video, then then it becomes more clear to say, okay, we have done a lot of shit, but we have to do something to get a better future. And I think they mean it not only for Germany. They, I think they mean it also for the rest of the world. That depends always on the people who do something and what they do with that, what they have seen from the past or learned from the past that they not let let it run in an Armageddon. Okay, gotcha. Then uh, jump into to the current moment. I I, I suppose you know that uh, at this moment in Ukraine there are some vehicles, German-made vehicles, which are um, how to say vehicles made for war, like uh, that's something that shoots or something that um, puts mines or whatever. So it's uh, so this. Um, These vehicles are working at this moment, as we speak. Yeah, it is normal. And your question about it, uh, and, uh, what meaning I have when we send uh, military equipment somewhere? or um, I, I don't think so. I don't think we were not military persons. And if we were, we would not be able to discuss it openly anyway. I um, I mostly wanted to like draw a bit of a uh, of link between what the uh, this uh, video Deutschland was showing and uh, how fast it turned into uh, at least a bit of it yeah turned into reality so it's it's actu actually happening right now so in this uh, uh, look looking at it um, like in the hindsight i see it as a There was something like like a like a prophecy, something about the future, and it, uh, I I uh, saw it as a, as a dark future, and <laughs> basically it is happening right now as we speak. Um, yeah, not sure. So so uh, let let me try to propose the question like this. Uh, okay. Since since I think uh, most Germans know that German equipment is taking part on the Ukraine side at this moment in Ukraine. So the question is, how do they feel about it? About um, this fact, I mean. The problem is, I cannot speak for, for who is Germany. That is uh, the main part. I can only explain it from my side, what I think about. It is the real difference. And I think a lot of uh, other ones have maybe the same feeling. Yes, on the one side, I see the problem that if you give more material to someone, that will extend uh, military conflict. That is true. But on the other side, you have the problem, uh, what will happen if you don't do that? If the, uh, the one side who attacked will win, what will be the next? And how we can... Um, find a solution to stop it. And as you maybe have seen with uh, speaking, it seems not working. Uh, did, I, did I get you correctly that, um, uh, well, at least some Germans, and uh, you, you, you answer for yourself, like your environment. So they are actually afraid that if they don't stop Russia somewhere in Ukraine, they will come for, for Germany? Uh, not directly, but um, a lot of think if um, Ukraine is done, then they maybe search for something else. If it directly then came to Germany, I don't think like that, because Germany is part of the NATO, and NATO um, is a a huge, huge other thing, a completely other thing. And uh, I, I hope that, that Russia is uh, smart enough and says, okay, that makes no sense at all. But uh, there you have other parts in Europe that are not part of the NATO or not uh, have a contract with European and so on. And um, the, The danger behind it all is that, that it goes on. That if that was taken, then maybe the next one 
nobody knows what what uh, happened in the in the Kremlin at the moment because uh, you have only the leader there and you see from time to time um, the other other boys and girls from them who tell something, but you not not wonder ten percent sure what is um, the final goal at that. So, 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 uh, so, so, if I understand you correctly, so, uh, so they feel it as a danger, but not to a NATO countries, like to to countries which are not part of the NATO. Yeah. Yeah. If they would would uh, would try to uh, conquer some uh, countries that are part of the NATO, then we have a special construct that all NATO countries have to react. And if that happens, um, the re reaction will be uh, uh, like an Armageddon, I think. So basically, uh, uh, you suggest that, um, well, at, at least part of uh, 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 partially Germans feel that they they are protecting some other other countries, not Ukraine, some countries which are, can be next, like yeah, in the list. <laughs> Yes and no. I think they protect the other, try to protect the other countries and also to get the situation, if you can um, explain it as situation, in a um, stable or in a mode that uh, is stable that you say, okay, you can try it, but you will not win. You know what I mean? Simple to say, we have also power, we have also a military force. And if you try it, you will lose. That is, I think, the, the clear answer or the, the clear, the clear words that will be spoken or try to be spoken. Okay. Then, uh, <laughs> uh, since you spoke about uh, some danger, maybe to some third countries, and uh, as a pro uh, like a via proxy, proximal danger to Germany. How do you feel about this uh, blowout uh, on the Nord Stream, which happened since we were trying to uh, set up this talk? <laughs> what do you think about it? Uh, that is a very good question. The, the problem is uh, that um, we never will find out who has done it. That I have seen. Because every side will uh, say yes, that was a terroristic act. But uh, there are ideas who can handle this. And there are ideas why this happened or not happened. But uh, then for me, is, I have a feeling, but uh, more, I cannot say it's true or wrong or whatever. Yeah, but that's actually what I'm asking about the feelings. That's exactly <laughs> the point. So what are the feelings? Uh, I, from, your, from my side, the feeling is very easy. Who can manage that? That means someone who has undersea boots can go down there and make an explosion there. So, and there are not a lot of countries out there who are able to handle that. So, the second is the persons who have done this have to know where the uh, pipelines are located. And especially where it is safe to explode them that it is not directly all other around or surrounding them to figure out that there was someone or is someone. That is well, that the thing. So, but the sense behind that in any case. So for that I have no idea why to do that and what what is uh, the goal behind that. What uh, what they want to to have for this that I don't see at the moment. Maybe in half of a year it becomes more clear. Nobody knows that at the moment because there are a lot of uh, things going on there at the uh, at the moment. Who makes in the first look on it not the right case, and but if you wait then a little bit and see other things, then it becomes more and more clear. I hope you know what I mean a little bit. I think so, yeah. But but uh, <laughs> uh, um, 
so you have no like suggestions which country exactly so no feelings about it no i don't want it really i i have a feeling that uh, there is only one who has who is or one person who has for the moment a little bit i would say uh, reacts very crazy and it, i think it could be really really it's really possible that they have done it in uh, let us say on a lecture thing on a short circuit moment well okay so so no concrete country well my suggestion is well i think it's kind of obvious the, the reason behind it the reason behind it was to mess around these energy supplies for what reason and for what side that is uh, something to discuss and to speculate about but the, i think that the reason was to to like cut cut out the energy completely so even the remote possibility of some negotiations or reestablishment or the the pipelines uh, uh, turning on will be will not be impossible uh, possible so I, I think that was the reason but but uh, my next question is then okay if we don't ho if we don't know who did it then um, what's what's the reaction uh, on the everyday life in germany uh, did it cause something So some more uh, some more havoc regarding the prices of the of the gasoline or something else did it have no. any 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 effect at all on on like uh, everyday life no, no. because um, this situation what you described now happens around four or five months before that uh, from Russian side uh, the energy delivering was lowered and things like that. And that was a little bit, I wouldn't say a real crisis, but uh, there was uh, the price, the prices for gasoline and so on was ongoing. But then they built up new contracts with other countries like, for example, Norway and also with Arabian countries and Af North African countries to get energy from them and it seems to work because I have seen for on the gasoline station that the price was not rising after that. It's still on the same level as weeks before. That's interesting. And about this thing which was happening since February, could you describe what um... What what were the effects in Germany on what was happening since uh, February the twenty fourth? Uh that is hard hard to uh, uh, to uh, I would say to explain it because we had different situations. The first uh, general uh, the situation was like a thought, uh, the special military operation from Russia side. That was one thing, but we. Used Uh, had also all the time still Corona there, and Corona uh, had also made something like a small crisis on the complete European economic. And so that is a little bit a mix of all of them. What we have seen that the, the prices for gasoline, gas, and so on was rising. But then we had also a very hot the summer in Europe. And there was, for example, the problem in France that their atomic reactors get not enough cooling from the water because the, the seas and rivers went hot and the uh, uh, water level itself goes down. And so they had to reduce the production of energy. So they um, had then to board energy in Germany, electrical energy, and that rise has also raised the price for energy. So that is, um, let us say, a construct that we have three or four things included, then we shown. So we have normally to divide them a little bit. I hope uh, you, you, you get it what I tried to explain. Well, I, I got that uh, that uh, you had several different uh, big effects: the 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 corona and the crisis, then the the heat, 
the mm. hot summer and 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 as and between them this uh special operation thing yes. so so how would you describe the if you if you can try to a bit isolate so what what uh what was happening because of this military special operation or whatever <laughs> whatever you call it um uh, itself i think um Germany group was in February when it was beginning. At the, the beginning, it was completely shocking because nobody knows what happened. We have seen that uh, the troops were on their way to Kiev. Um, uh, it, for many words, a moment of waiting and not sure what will happen next. Will the Ukraine directly say hands up? It's over. Welcome, my friend. That was one of the things that could happen. Or the second, will the, or the, the question itself was always, will they fight back or not? Because if they will not fight back, then it's, it's done. What else should we do? That was the first moment. Then uh, we have seen, was on news, TV, and whatever, that um, Ukraine is fighting back. And this was then the moment where we, where a lot of people and also the generally understanding was, okay, let us help them. They want the country to be protected. They want to get their lost parts back. So we have to do something that uh, makes it possible that they can do that. That was, uh, on the thinking side. But then we had problems a little bit with all that economic things, but from the life itself, it had not been changed a lot. It was only that we had, had taken a look what happened there, what happened not, but from our life itself, how it feels and how it goes on, it was not a huge difference. Later in the year, we had then the it's a special uh, Constructs that the gas um, delivering was lowered first and stopped again and a little bit goes up and down and a lot of companies left than uh, Russia because of uh, the, uh, new laws that are available and things like that. Then for us was always thinking, yeah, okay, we now on the position uh, that we will not do any business in the future anymore with Russia. And then was for, I think for all the people, was it like that the old times from the UDSSR will come back and things like that. And then we, I would say, most then simple finish that history and say, okay, that is now, that is now the situation. And, um, uh, what will come in the future or will be happen in the future, nobody knows it at the moment. From the living itself in Europe or especially in Germany, we had a little bit of rising prices of all goods that we consume, service and things like that, but they are around 10%. It means in the middle you have 10% to, um, to spend more or food and things like that. But you have also to know that we have had the last 10 or 15 years no increase on that side. There was nothing. It keeps on zero all the years. And now we have around 10%. I don't see that really as a problem because normally you say each year, if you have inflation of one, maybe two, maximum 3%, is normal, but we had a, don't had it the last 10 or 15 years. But for the moment, it looks much bigger. Uh, things like that, that uh, you get before for one euro, you have now to pay, uh, pay it for 1.10 or 1.15, something like that. That does it include the, uh, the, the energy side, like gasoline, electricity, heating, whatever. Yeah, like I told you, from the gasoline side, 
it increased a little bit in the beginning, and then now it's lowered again on a level that is similar to that as before February. So that means from the gasoline side, no. From the energy, is for the moment, it's a little bit double. Because the problem is that a lot of, or some mutual companies, that we are only ex or importing gas from Russia, and now this part is stopped, so they have a little bit problem with their business, because they bought cheap gas and sold it a little bit more expensive to the market. But uh, the problem for them is that they have contracts that goes from half of a year, one year or two years, and things like that, and they still have to um, do the contracts, but the gas price itself is more higher, and they have no, no, um, how to say, no, no mechanism to increase also the, the sale price for their contract because the contracts are fixed. Hope you know what I mean. Okay, I got you. Yeah, that's interesting. Actually, that the prices came back to the before the February. That that's interesting. So so. Uh, um... I understand that the, the uh, houses in Germany are mostly not uh, not supplied with gas, with natural gas. So, the, so you use heating from from the crude oil, yeah, something like this. Yeah. And and this oil, I I remember you uh, you, you told me many times that you have like huge tanks somewhere under the house where you buy like for 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 three or five years worth of. Uh, of crude oil for the heating, yeah? Yeah, possible. Between one and three years. Uh, depends obviously on how huge your house is or your your flats where you live. But normally that's what you can then buy. Or the tank is regulated as you can say between one, two, three years is no problem. Yeah, that that's that's make. I guess it makes a big difference. Yeah, because uh, yeah, if it was based on gas, uh, uh, on on natural gas, then it would be different, completely different picture. So uh, from from what I heard, so it seems like uh, well, at least from from what you're saying, so the energy situation in Germany is not that bad as they describe, like say for for Great Britain or some other countries. So it seems that they like man manage it quite well generally. Yeah, but I also think in the other parts of Europe, the the problem is not so huge. Yes, um, we have to say we have a little bit problem with our economy. In that case, that guess what uh, was getting before was quite cheap. So that means the prices. For a good or a product, one also smaller or the, the part for what you can take on money was a little bit higher in that case, so that is lower now. We have a lot of people, or uh, let us say, economic person who say, Yeah, we have a problem with uh, that the prices of that are so expensive, that means our product became expensive. And that means on the world market, nobody will buy it. But that are rumors, I would say, because at the moment, or generally, all of the country has to uh, uh, deal with the higher prices. So that means at the end, it makes not a huge difference. And also nobody knows what price the economy had exactly to pay the different uh, companies who provide gas delivery, you know? Yeah, but for, from what I heard that uh, most mostly affected was the, like heavy machinery, metal works, um, uh, like machines producers, who uh, the, the heavy industry, which produces the big machines and medium-sized machines and, and metal works, like yes, they were people. affected. Yeah, and they are crying at uh, crying a little bit about that because the gas is now more expensive for they have or want to use there. But um, before, in the 
dass er in die 90s or something like that, before all that infrastructure of pipelines was there and things like that. It was also one. You know what I mean? So they have to go back, but it is more, a little bit more expensive and they see first their money. That it is the simple, simple thing. Yeah, yeah, I, I, got, I got it. But uh, I hear that some big companies are c either considering leaving the Germany for the, the main production. They are, they are thinking or maybe already moving like big production stuff no. from Germany no. to somewhere outside. No, that is a little more. It is, uh, it is not, not there. All the, all the car manufacturer still working, all the iron and uh, steel manufacturer are still working. No. If something happened like that, we would have it or seen in the US, directly in the US. If uh, someone says, you can just come in here, huge name, whatever, will close their doors in Germany and reopen it, for example, in Africa or Latin America or Asia or whatever. No, that's not happen. So you are saying that it's a uh, it's a myth. It's it's a uh, it's not not true. So no no such movement at least at this moment. No, it's propaganda. If you heard it from your newspapers or, or read in your newspapers or TV, then it's propaganda. Quite quite possibly that that's actually one of the reasons why I'm recording this conversation because I I, I honestly want to. To get some independent information from uh, not not many connections, unfortunately, which I have. So, yeah. so <laughs> you are one of my connections who can tell me a little bit what is happening. In generally, actually, what from, from what, what I what I put together from what you are saying that actually nothing big, nothing that big happened since February. So, so the question then uh, then remains: uh, what's all the fuss is about when nothing actually? Nothing big is happening, at least in Germany. I don't know for other countries. Have you yeah. been to? Have you recently? Uh, by the way, since uh, since February, have you been to other countries in Europe, like uh, aside from Germany? No, not really, because of Corona, it was uh, not possible to uh, travel. So it means a lot of uh, companies uh, told no, we don't want to let someone in and things like that. So we had done our last two or three years only work probably by, uh, I would say, communicators and do a, a problem solution by video calls. Mm. Okay. And I, I think a lot of the companies are also get it that they want to do it more like that, that no, not a lot of persons will travel to them because they can save the money done for the traveling. No, oh, of course, yeah, that's <laughs> uh, uh, only the office space. So most companies, at least uh, for what I know, all the companies who could move the workers, uh, like working from home, of course they did it, and and they managed to to get the offices smaller, and the smaller mm -hmm. office costs less, of course. So they actually they are. In some respects, they're quite glad that that, that this COVID thing happened. <laughs> it, yeah, yeah. yeah, it changed a lot of things. But but I have to say, since uh, since uh, basically, as you're saying, not much happened since February. I even less understand in this respect uh, what is the German uh, weapons doing in, in Ukraine. It's even less understandable in this uh, in this case. I I don't I don't get it. Yeah, uh, uh, something you, something political, I guess. Have you never seen a Star Wars or other films that have always a good and a bad side, a white and a black side? Then uh, it becomes clear. On the one side we have the Russian, this is the black side. On the other side we have the Ukraine, that is for us the white side. And the white side needs support. Very simple. It's always like that. Yeah, but here, uh, I, I don't know if you know it, at least uh, such content would be quite dangerous to 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 view in Germany. That I understand, so I'm not sending you any links or whatever. But you can take my word from it. So a lot of... Uh, remember then you, and then you were you and colleagues were showing me off some, some German uh, Stads or uh, the, the cities around. Yeah. 
I asked about the uh, how it's called the the stuff from from the from the World War Two, like where we can yeah. get see it or buy it. And basically, everyone told me you cannot buy this thing; they are forbidden, absolutely. So it's only available for museums. So you will not, you're not able to get anything like not a knife, not 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 a a, a, a comb, nothing. Absolutely, with, with some uh, insignia from from World War Two. Yeah. But in in Ukraine, in Ukraine, <laughs> where the German tanks are now, maybe not only tanks, I don't know, but there's a lot of this stuff, and uh, both um, made of uh, during the times of World War II and modern made. So they have the uniforms, all insignia like SS, whatever, like everything, and they are so, some of them. Uh, sometimes they show us like uh, the the prisoners, the uh, prisoners of war. Who are covered in tattoos, like you know, some people who are covered f- from from the neck to 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 the knees with uh, these crosses and swastikas and SS and whatever. Like uh, uh, I, I don't want I don't want to say that this name. Let, let's call him. Um, th- there is a term called uh, an Austrian vegetarian painter. Yeah, so the, the portraits of this uh, Austrian vegetarian painter are like uh, all on the bodies. So. It's interesting. Uh, people in Germany, do they know that uh, many of Ukrainians and many of the uh, like stormtroopers, they uh, have a lot of this stuff, a lot. Like they're sometimes covered from, from the head to the toes of this stuff. Yeah, that is possible. But uh, that is the thing, how many persons that are. We were here about... If you take all the soldiers on, of them together, or all the persons who, who are doing there or something, that are more than 10%, that they are more than 1%, that are 100%, or, or 50%, you know what I mean? It's it's hard to say, but I can I can only since I don't have any inside information, I can only give my impression from uh, from the Telegram channels which I monitor since uh, since February. Yeah. So I will tell you uh, something uh, real. The problem is, uh, or the things are really simple. In our two uh, days today, we we uh, have a, a strong view about news or media telegram. And if two, three, five people posting some picture, then we have a thinking from ourselves that this what is shown there on one, two, maybe ten person. That means that all of them like this. But the real, I think, is that this kind of person, you find it everywhere on the world. Also in Germany, they are still standing there and say the time between 32 and 45 was the best time that we could have. Something like that. You will find, find everywhere. And But this, if you put it in a percentage, then this is less than 1%. And you have always to uh, to keep in your mind that uh, today, also in that special condition situation, um, a lot of propagandic material is out there and will be used for brainwashing. I think the standard soldier or the standard person, they are there and nobody of them wants to lose their life for ideas of person that maybe is become a little bit crazy. That is my feeling or my meaning. Uh, um, th- th- this opinion which you which you just told, is it uh, like m- most people around you are thinking about this? So, so, so there are such people, but they are like, uh, let's say, 1% of all the people there. <laughs> I would say that uh, that are uh, that are my ideas have a lot of German or a lot of people around the world. That is simple say normally if you think about it, then this special operation makes no sense at all. Why why they speak for all the time Russia have spoken from the Ukraine as their brothers and now they make a war against them and they slaughter their brothers. What is the, the the sense behind it? It could be only the same as for 
did law in the uh, uh, 40 years to make war upon, uh, against his neighbor because he had the idea of a huge German empire. For me, the, the history re repeats in the same steps as we had in the 30 years where uh, Hitler has overtaken Germany. He, if you look to Putin, he has done it in the same way. First, he uh, was elected by the citizen, uh, by, uh, by the folk, and then he changed all the democratic things that it became more and more like an empire. And then he searched for enemies, found enemies, explained we have to help them. Then he uh, figured out a position that he can attack someone else and attack. Yeah, but the huge difference is of between Germany and Russia for the moment that Germany was able to catch other countries to take them over and build up their spe uh, special kingdom until it became too much. But here we have the situation for Russia that they uh, had, had problems with the first that they want to catch. I have to state just to, just to be clear, uh, I have absolutely uh, zero reasons to uh, like or love uh, Mr. Putin. Absolutely zero. I never voted for him. So it's so wh wh whatever I'm saying about Ukraine, whatever I'm saying, it does not uh, mean that I'm I, I like <laughs> Mr. Putin <laughs> or what he actually even even if we if we take Ukraine out of the question and just stop on on January. Uh, January 2022. Even before yeah. that, I have a lot of reasons to not like him. <laughs> that, that's uh, that's out of the question. But uh, still, uh, uh, at least what I see from from the uh, from the front lines, yeah, cameras and uh, photos from the phones or uh, GoPros or whatever. So yeah, there's actu actually a lot of this. Um, how it's called? Memorabilia. When the collectors collect this stuff, they call it memorabilia, yeah, like yeah, yeah. the historical things which uh, <laughs> properly belong to a museum. But yeah, uh, I, I I'm not sure about I I don't I don't have any numbers, so about one percent or two percent, I'm not sure. I would say that. Um, do, do you by any chance know? Do you know the person named Gonzalo Lira? No. No, I need to, to send you a link, at least to one of his. Uh, that's an absolutely special guy. So he's a Chilean born, then uh, American citizen. Then he married a Ukrainian woman. And now he's stuck in Kharkov since the beginning. So he, yeah. first he was in, in, in uh, I think first he was in Kiev. Then after like maybe two weeks or three weeks, he managed to get to his family in Kharkov. And so he actually conducts streams from there, from day one. Mm -hmm. So uh, he had some some interesting insights because he knows a little bit about the politics. He's um, into has some connections in financial circles, uh, circles uh, in, in a higher financial circles in USA, and knows some things about Ukraine. I, I gotta say, send you some of his some of his uh, streams from uh, from earlier. But but yeah. the, the, I would say that uh, well, I'm I'm not saying that he's hundred percent right because he's also not not um, a military person, so he doesn't have any any I don't know intimate insights into how this is happening. But but what he was saying and and basically it uh, it mostly corroborates what I know from other sources. So uh, in Ukraine they were created like these special special formations. So like first we were paramilitary formations and later they became like just military formations and they were ultra nationalistic well you can safely call them Nazis so at least uh, Gonzalo Lira has no problem calling them Nazis and and uh, Scott Ritter uh, maybe, maybe you heard about him Scott Ritter who reports a lot of on, on this uh, situation he also has no problem stating right away yeah that's <laughs> plain Nazis so these several uh, maybe they're not so big but they were like um, well a bit a little bit like SS troops uh, during World War II so they basically are the ideological uh, front line or the ideological edge 
then using these uh, ultra nationalistic troops they were uh, trying to uh, even even now at this moment so they are trying to like um, change the mood so to say or ideologically switch all all all, all the forces so so they, they spread these uh, quote unquote ss troops throughout the normal army so so that they continue working with this uh, ultra nationalistic uh, ideas and politics and materials and uh, whatever goes next so yeah maybe there are not not that many of them but what they do actually for example what they do with prisoners of war of russian prisoners of war there are a lot of a lot of videos on telegram which i, I would not advise you to see if you have uh, on only for a strong stomach so it, it's hard to believe what people can do and and this is not happening like you know with some um prehistoric people somewhere in Africa. Yeah, so it's happening in Europe and white people are from both sides and they do stuff which is just just unthinkable, right on camera. So it's not like a third, a third party reporting. No, these are uh, videos which you, you, you usually um, when Ukrainians get captured, so these videos go uh, from, from, from their phones. That That's how they end up on the on the internet. So yeah, regarding the the proportion of these uh, ultra guys, uh, yeah, could be that they are like uh, maybe one percent, maybe five percent. I don't know, but uh, like uh, they are the ones who are setting the the mood or the scene, mm. the the general true. relationship. At, at least, yeah, at, at, at least, mm. what what you can say absolutely for sure, like for everyone, the salute. Uh, the military salute which Ukrainians use. It's, it sounds, um, Slava Ukraini, Geroyam Slava, which is a little, uh, the exact words which Bandera was using for his salute. You know who Bandera was? Stepan Bandera? No, so, not exactly. But I think it's also, <laughs> uh, uh, something like a small Hitler. <laughs> yeah, sm small or maybe not so small Ukrainian Hitler. Yeah, from, from World War II. So they are actually, Taken so, uh, ju just uh, uh, maybe not exactly, but that it it would be as if, uh, for example, today in 2022, uh, German army suddenly started to uh, for hello say like uh, Heil Hitler. That's basically yeah. like this. But but there is no uh, name in this uh, phrase. It's only uh, Ukraine, Slav, uh, Slav Ukraine, Hero Slav. It's like glory to Ukraine. Uh, glory to heroes, something like this. But, but, but these are the, this is the exact, uh, formula which Bandera was using. <laughs> and, and all, yeah, all Ukraine good. uses this phrase. All Ukraine. Everyone. Every, every single. So it's a standard military and not only military, it's a standard military salute now. That, that's yeah. for sure. Yeah, his, uh, the, the problem is always a little bit on history and things that uh, we see now, um, to put it in the correct relation. Because um, you have there the special um, gestics to say hello or things like that. But uh, I, I would not simply say that all of them who used it are directly Nazi, you know? Of course, I, I, I would say that maybe some of them don't even know who was Bandera and that was his phrase. <laughs> I, I can believe it, absolutely. Yeah, yeah. And I, what you told in the, the videos and things like that of, of capturing, uh, soldiers and do uh, not so good things with them, that it happens from both sides. It is always the problem that you have a small part of person there less than one person that uh, lose everything if they are um, able to uh, to harm the uh, other one. And in this case, or well, the problem in our days now is that someone has always his mobile phone with, with him and do a video from them and will upload it. And then we see this one, two, three, maybe 100 or 10 or 1,000 small videos where a person will be harmed in any way. And then we say all of them did that. But this is wrong. It is completely wrong. That is a part of propaganda that uh, the propaganda person say, 
okay, look at that. You have your 10 videos. We have uh, split it off and say all of them out like this. And normally it works because what you see, that is the other part uh, as if you read it, you know? If you hear about there was 1,000, 10,000, 100,000 person killed, then it looks much, but we don't have really uh, from our understanding a problem with that. If you heard then a story of one, two, three, four person, how they were killed and why that happened and things, then it began to use this pain for this the story goes more near to us and we say, yes, they have to be all like this and things like that. But it is, you have all the ways to be a little bit careful what you see and in which relationship it will be shown and what the person who shows it want uh, to wake up in you. And that is, in our moments now, the most dangerous thing, that all the things that we see, we have always to think for ourselves, is the propaganda what we will see? Is this the reality? And how we uh, should deal with it. That are the three most important points that you have to keep in your mind always if you read something or see something. Yeah, I got you. The problem is this: uh, I, I understand all the all the things connected. Uh, I understand uh, the general ideas about the wartime information management. Yeah. It, it happens a lot now. But in, in case of if if we would for if I'd focus on this uh, torture uh, stuff, then uh, unfortunately I already have materials which came from me not from. From the official like telegram channels but i already have uh, um, like comrades of comrades who already been to ukraine and already yeah. took part in in the in this uh and and so they, they captured some of the these mobile devices from ukrainians and they uh, copied the stuff from there so so it's not like uh, stuff which was downloaded from some unknown telegram channel that that the thing which was captured from the, from a person so they took somebody and he had a, a phone on him of course they check all the, all, all everything which is in uh, within the phone and there are videos a lot of videos videos which you w wouldn't <laughs> i would not uh, i would not advise you to 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 look at them but if if you want to i can forward you some if, no, if you, if you have a, if you have a strong stomach <laughs> I don't need it. Uh, for me it's clear what we uh, in some part can be there as I told you, history is repeating, and uh, how more they fight and uh, more uh, it goes man to man, uh, it more and more escalate from the violent side. That is simply the problem. Because normally, if you think you have uh, a farmer in Ukraine and a farmer in Russia, normally they don't want to fight against the, the, the standard thing. But if they fight uh, and the fight goes longer and longer, it more and more escalates. That is some of the problem. So, so if, if I got you correctly, then, um, um, uh, like, say, like, um, in general, it seems that uh, Germans do not see uh, any connection between um, between German tanks uh, being in Ukraine and that uh, the people who operate these tanks are covered in swastika. So they, they either don't know about it or don't think uh, as this as something significant. <laughs> Uh, no, because on the other side, the Russians are also not a problem to send their Wagner soldiers there or have persons running around. They are 100% for, for this way to do it. So you have, like I told you, you have that uh, specialists or the extremists on both sides always. That is simply the problem. And yes, for me, it's not nice that persons like that having on both sides because that are for me criminals in most cases if they kill people uh, on 
on the way that the people have handed up and say, oh, for me it's over, and afterwards they do something that, uh, with them that they came to death. That should be not, but it happened because it's war, and in, in war situation, the human being is lost, and the human becomes a, a animal again. Okay, I got you. Well, uh, absolutely. I, I who, who did who did it say? I think uh, Scott Ritter was saying it. So that, like he said something like, "Do do I believe that some excesses are happening from the Russian side?" Yeah, that's probably yeah. So so it, it, you you can you basically I think it's impossible to to have uh, like a large scale scale war. And uh, somebody just hap just happened to be like a, a crazy person, or uh, like ultra nationalistic, or just just uh, not not right with his with his head. So could, there could be yeah, some, okay. some, is, some. This is one part. The other the other thing that is also if you will be there in the war zone together with three, four, five other people surrounding you all the time. Let us call they they become your brother's friends or whatever. You're always together with them. So and then you're in a special condition that you have to wait somewhere to defend or attack someone, and one of or two of your friends will be shut down. So in yourself, you will have a feeling. I need. I want to revenge them. You you know what I mean. So in yeah. that case, the person is mutating. It became an animal. And then you see that one uh, that is the enemy. He, he has no weapons. He is, uh, has been maybe a little bit injured. And then you want to do that revenge. Also, in the case that you before was never a person who would do that, that you simply go on the street and you shoot someone down or will then harm in everywhere, everywhere. It will happen in that special situation. That you have problem with the situation itself, and for that is then to harm the other one. Your solution, and that's simple the problem. This is a physic, uh, uh, a physiolog logic, uh, physiological thing. Well, I got you, but uh, yeah, well. This is the area which is not uh, not safe to discuss publicly. Yeah. So, but but uh, okay, I got <laughs> I got your point. <laughs> anyway, yeah. so let us say it's very simple. We can put out videos. We can put out uh, writing downs and things like that. But in the end, it's well, it's always to to think about that. What I see or or read, uh, it's only a very small part of all of it. And a lot of people, they know what is right or wrong. But in specific situation, this uh, normal feeling or, or handling has been, has been changed. And we should keep it like that. that normally, the most of them do it correct, do it right. Also in the case that the most of them don't want to be there, they would like to sit at home and watch a TV. And not to fight against the other one. That I think this is the ground uh, position everywhere. That war is always shit, I would say. So, but uh, I would say is there are special situations that the persons do things they normally will not do it. And in our days now, we get a lot of information about persons who have done something that is not correct, and then we think. This is the standard situation, but I think that is not the standard situation. That is a lot of uh, propaganda material what we use there to say our enemy is the, uh, how would say, our enemy that is the, the real enemy and there's nothing else. Because these things you can also then use for your own soldier to say if you will say, hands up, I don't want to fight any longer, they will do that with you if you don't fight. You don't have to give up. You don't have to surrender. But this is also a repeating of history, the same situation you had in the Second World War. 
the, the person wasn't told, if you surrender, if you give up, then they will kill you, they will kill came to you, your family, things like that. Well, I have to say to, to kill is not, is not the, the worst thing which could be done. I think yeah, I think I, I think if if I showed you some of these videos, you no, you also no, you would no, agree no. that you shouldn't uh, you shouldn't uh, shouldn't I, I give, you yourself up, I mean. give yourself up give yourself up yeah. But that is the thing. But we do not speak about uh, how we can do a, a person and how we can make it possible that he keeps very long life until he dies. You know what I mean? That is a completely different thing. Don't let us speak about that. Uh, that makes no sense because it became endless. Yeah.